Welcome to Holy Week. We have so looked forward to this season. Easter is the high point of our faith. If we did not have a resurrected Christ, we have no hope. But so much transpires in our lives and as we look historically through the scriptures in the life of Christ leading up to that resurrection moment. There's some ways that we can help you with this. Um, as a pastoral staff, it is so important to us that you experience the resurrected Christ. And so we want to do something that's um, unique, certainly to Brookings Church of the Nazarene, maybe unique to other churches, where we're inviting you to engage in this with us this Holy Week. We are going to be taking each day in this week, Monday through Friday, in a pattern of preparation, in a pattern of worship, a pattern of uh, self-reflection, uh, maybe some confession, and an openness to how God wants to change our heart as we focus on the resurrection. So for these next five days, journey with us. Journey with us through uh, the anointing of Jesus at Bethany, the beginning of this Holy Week process. Journey with us as we walk the streets of Jerusalem through the scriptures with you when Jesus makes his triumphal entry. Get into the world of that first century Jew in that time who was experiencing Christ and who he was, this, this uh, Redeemer sent, the Messiah sent, as preparations are made for the Passover. And then as we get closer, we're going to celebrate in the Passover with you as we will break bread and share the cup with you. And then we're going to focus on as Christ carried his cross, carried his cross to Golgotha, and what that meant for them and what that means for you and I. Each day, you're going to be invited to participate with us in this. Each of our staff has devoted time and prayer and energy toward communicating this message of preparation to the resurrection. Each day, you're going to be receiving a video, and you're also going to be receiving some resources that are going to help you as a family come together and celebrate this Holy Week. So my prayer for you is that you would allow your minds and your hearts to be open in a new way, a different way. And allow the Holy Spirit to begin to do that work in your heart as we are all prepared and made ready to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. So Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Jerusalem for the annual celebration of the Jewish Passover. Jesus and his disciples arrive in Bethany just in time for the Sabbath, where Jesus spends his last Sabbath before his crucifixion at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. When Sabbath is over at sundown on Saturday, a meal was prepared for Jesus. At this table were Jesus' disciples, and Lazarus was there too, the man Jesus had raised from the dead, a living testimony of Jesus and his glory right there in front of the guests. And Jesus had been there before though. Roughly six months prior to this event, Jesus was in Bethany and stayed with Mary and Martha, where Mary had sat at Jesus' feet, soaking in all of his words and teaching. And Mary had taken these words with her as she pondered them, which ultimately led her to this moment of anointing him. The perfume Mary used was nard, a very fragrant and expensive oil that came from the Indian nard plant. And this oil would have been kept in a jar that was sealed on the top. So in order for the oil to come out, they would have had to break the jar open. Mary had kept this perfume for a very special occasion, but she poured it on Jesus. She poured it on his head and on his feet. But why? Why would she do this? When did she know that she would use this perfume on Jesus instead of selling it for profit? When did she know that she would pour out her whole life and future upon Jesus? Was it six months ago when she sat before him 
or was it a gradual process leading up to this day? Whenever it was, this act was out of complete humility and it was so beautiful that Jesus held it so dear to his heart that even the Gospels of Matthew and Mark record Jesus saying that Mary's story needed to be shared with the whole world to share about God's faithfulness to his promises to Israel. In your Holy Week kits, you're going to find lavender leaves. Now I know lavender isn't a historic representation of what took place in this passage, but it is a fragrant reminder of this anointing that went with Jesus through this week. And so each day I want you to take this lavender leaf and I want you to smell it. And as you smell it, I want you to ponder on this question of when did you know? When did you know that Jesus was the savior of the world? that he died for your sins so that you could have life. And if you don't know, will that time be now? Will that time be now where you say, Jesus, I want to pour out my whole life to you because I believe that you are the son of God who has come to save the world.